So let's let's switch it to acquisition. And we uh, uh, we mentioned this in, in the you know in our show previously. Just the uh, question was uh, the question I had was uh, what were some of the mistakes that you learned from? And one of the things you mentioned is the mistakes in uh, uh, acquiring. Because, right. And this is you know and, and I'm honing in on that because I have some friends. I've never uh, acquired a company, uh, but I've have plenty of entrepreneur friends, and I know that a few have, and a few have made some horrendous mistakes and almost lost his whole business because he bought something that was, you know, he sold a bill of goods that just wasn't there. Right. So what are some of the pitfalls that we can avoid, and what have you guys done to try to avoid those things, and, and you know, so learning or, from or the mistakes. Or not avoid them. Yeah, yeah. exactly, <clears throat> or, or, or learn from the mistakes that you make. Well, to me, the, the, the discussion we'll have about us is no different than the conversation we had about the habit of doing M&A, any M&A work for a client. First question is why? Why do you want? To, why do you want to acquire? Are you acquiring for geographical presence? Are you acquiring because they have a product that you don't have that fits nicely into what you're doing? Do they have a sales force that you don't have that allows you to take what you've already got and sell through an existing network? Uh, am I hiring for staff? Do they have staff I can't get my hands on? And it's a lot. So there's, you've got to look at why you're doing the deal. And, and you know, I can take some of the mistakes that we've made. But go back to, they're not really mistakes. What they were was when we look at why we did the deal, it held. Okay? The fact that we didn't get the bill of goods, because ultimately at the end of the day, acquiring a professional practice, no matter how much due deal you get, you are, or do, you are still buying people. Okay? And, 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 and they're unpredictable. And motivation change, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's... It was a very interesting exercise. Absolutely. I mean, we did a transition around 2010. We did an acquisition to be geographically somewhere else. But it was also people component. It was a different market for us. Uh, and we knew going in it was a rocky environment. Eight years later, um, some of the best people we've had came from that acquisition. We recognized, we exercised very early in, in, the, in the episode that we probably weren't going to stay. There were too many variables that weren't in favor. So we had an out clause within the lease that we exercised day one. So instead of getting stuck with a five-year lease, we got stuck with a year lease, 16 months or whatever it was. We repatriated the work downtown. We repatriated the people downtown. We cut the loss, maintained, and still to this day, maintained a very large portion of that book of business that we acquired, maintained some very solid, strong people who grown phenomenally within the firm. But so, not the two original partners. <coughs> no, and, and, and that's where, so part, you know, you, you, you walk in jaundiced, you know that there's issues here. You, you have to take the opportunity, as you said, to not go bankrupt, and you've got to minimize your exposure. So I know I'm buying something, why am I doing it? If you're doing it for a legitimate business reason, and you've protected against some of those areas, mm -hmm. then great. You know, and it doesn't mean it's going to go well all the time. It doesn't mean that everything works. It doesn't mean you're going to fire somebody and not end up in court. It happens. It happens to the, uh, happens to the best of us. But, but at the end of the day, where, you know, because, you know, we're, we're accountants and we do look at numbers, so we look at that. At the end of the day, it's the fit. It's the fit with the culture. And that's probably where some deals, the reason for some deals didn't work out over anything else. It was just two different cultures and two different fits and styles that ultimately could not be overcome mostly on their side because you know we, we typically uh, well, you know, like you said the good thing is we knew that going in okay the I mean part. there's there, there's a lot of deal I mean I will normally throughout the course of a year have at least two different discussions on the right of a potential deal, potential acquisition, whether it's a service offering, whether it's a small firm integrating, whether it's you know different location to see, and most of them don't go anywhere. And most of them don't go anywhere because we're pretty steadfast on what we accept and what we don't accept, the culture discussion, the people discussion. So you know we have found ourselves in situations where we go, you know what, these are really good client mixes, but the people aren't going to fit. You know, I'm not going to allow you to pick up your practice and bring it in and put it within four walls within our firm to do your own thing and live in your own bubble, okay, and screw up the culture that we've spent so much time building as an institutionalized firm as opposed to a protectionist firm. So there are a few things that are pretty much non-negotiators when we sit down at the table. If you're willing to get past that first level, now we'll talk and see if we fit. So the first is, do we get past those? The second is, do we pass the people test? Yeah. And so uh, uh, we, the first is understand your why, 100%. why you want to do it then, 
it, then it's this the you know okay. this, the fit and right. then it's are, are, are we gonna are we gonna block I mean I've gone I've probably had four solid LOI service offerings out to other firms LOI? that we letter of intent, intent sorry okay. to acquire their practice that never got past you know they might have been ten pages long that never got past the first paragraph which was this this and this are non-negotiable. Yeah. And if that's the case, don't bother reading the rest because the rest is irrelevant. And and that's a hard discussion. I mean, I've had lunch with people, and you know, there's oh, you know, we're doing we're in, we're interested. You guys are great. Let's join. So you know, you put put, you put the measurements on the table. So you know, your first is why are you doing this? The second is what are your non-negotiables? What is it that you will not jeopardize as you move forward? Okay. And if you have some of those, great. If you don't, then you should think about it because there are probably a few things in there that that are non-negotiable as far as yours, and that may be a control issue, as it may be a people issue, as it may be a culture, and there's a whole bunch of things. You have to see what works for you.